The following contest is scheduled for one fall, one submission or a knockout to decide the winner. And it is for the Unbred Wrestling League Canadian National Championship. <laughs> Good wrestling fans, welcome to the Battle Zone. This is the Animated Wrestling League, Strong and Free, episode 33. And we are starting off with one of two title matches this time. We are bookending this show with championship contests in the Joshi division. And there you see Project Kaiju leading in, acting as the, uh, the enforcer for the team. And there's Project Titan, who will be challenging for the Canadian National Championship in this contest. Five defenses of the Canadian National Championship, and you can cash it in for a match for the AWL Joshi Championship, which will be defended tonight in the main event. Lady Smooth, Jessica Kidd, makes her first title defense here in Canada, and her first title defense overall against Maxi Impaler. As the diabolical Dr. Chigoku escorts Project Titan, one of his newer creations, into the ring. Project Kaiju, for some reason, leading the charge here. I'm not entirely sure why that happened. But it will be Project Titan versus Amy Wade to start us off tonight. And also on the night, we've got multiple act, multiple matches in the tag team division. We're going to determine number one contenders for both the men's and women's tag team championships tonight. We just happen to have the number one and two contenders here in AWL Strong and Free. So we're going to put them together, and that's going to determine who gets the next championship match. So wheels within wheels, building upon building here as we make our way quickly towards AWL SNF 40 and AWL Hontai 400. Our home on native land, O oh Canada, Amy Wade, the undefeated Canadian national champion, making her way to the wing. You see that number one on the side plate of the belt. I mean, she has made one successful of this Canadian national championship, the CNC. And she's got a, a pretty big challenge, I mean that physically in this contest. We take a look at some of the uh, the win-loss records in play here. Amy Wade, of course, undefeated. She's currently 8-0 in her AWO career. Uh, Project Titan, a bit more balanced, 2-2. Two and two. So, in the experience game, this goes to Amy Wade on paper. When it comes to height, power, durability, most importantly, it goes to Project Titan. So this is going to be a clash of the stats. As we take a look at the proudest Canadian I think we've ever had, and I'm including Kid Canada in that assessment. And there it is, the Canadian National Championship belt. We now go to ringside for the official introductions to this opening title match. Introducing first the challenger, fighting out of the laboratory, representing the augments, Project Titan. All for Dr. Jigoku. And her opponent, she is the reigning and defending and later wrestling league Canadian national champion tonight, making her second title defense. Fighting out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, the true Toronto star, Amy Way. Yeah. And this is an officially sanctioned Canadian national championship match under the auspices of the Animated Wrestling League. AW Commissioner presiding. And the sound of the bell, AW official Louis Papaginami in charge. One of the many Babaganu siblings working here in AWL strong and free. And you can immediately see the height difference here as the crowd hushes in anticipation of a colossal tussle to use what could have been WrestleMania. Oh, good escape down the back by the Toronto star Amy Way, a graduate of the AWL dojo. Whereas Project Titan, created in the laboratory, programmed to be a professional wrestler, never actually trained in the art. This is man versus machine. This is John Henry, the steel drive and man, all over again in the context of professional wrestling. Uh, oh, good reversal of fortunes by Project Titan using that weight advantage to her advantage. 
As we're less than a minute in now on the champion, the trapezius claw hold, the referee checking to see if there's a submission, or maybe he just wants to take a look at the 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 the, the, the hindquarters of Project Titan. I don't know. I don't I don't yuck the referee's yum. One minute in, hammerlock, grounded hammerlock, going for a pentabreaker, possibly no, going for the the wrist manipulation. And I don't think that's a great strategy when you're dealing with a cyborg, because you don't know if they actually have any pain receptors in that part of the body, or if they have any pain receptors at all, given the totality of the cybernetics involved here. Amy Wade wanting her opponent on her feet. Oh! A bicycle kick, I think, into a punch. And Kamigoya is surpassing the gods. Amy Wade, a consummate striker, though she is skilled in other elements of the pro wrestling game as well. Going back to the grabs here, going back to the, man the, the manipulations and the joint locks. But I genuinely, I think she did more damage with that double knee to the spine than with anything else. At least in that combination. And wait a minute, the most Canadian move in the world is the sharpshooter, but immediately broken up. By the referee, well under the ropes. Dive into the cover. One, two. Ever since that debacle over in Japan, uh, our referees have been watching the rope breaks, been watching the plate of the ropes like a hawk. There's that knee strike, precision knee strike for the one, two, as we get a good shot at the hindquarters of the referee now. Why is the camera focusing on the butts? I do not understand this. Good wrist control by Amy Wade, opening the chest of Project Titan to the attack. And I have to imagine, while she's preparing for her match with Max the Impaler, Lady Smooth Jessica Kidd, the mistress of the world of sports style, is going to be watching this. Is going to be thinking, okay, I'm, I may very well have to face one of these women, and uh, whoever wins this match, I may have to face them in a cash-in title defense, and that never favors the champion, because the challenger gets to choose the rules, gets to choose the field of combat. And into the cover again, lateral press, good hook of the leg, technically proficient, but just not enough. The fighting spirit, the Tokan of Amy Wade, getting that shoulder up before the final and fatal three count can be registered. 26 minutes, 40 seconds remaining on the clock. We've yet to get to our first official time call in this match. And going up, this is what she tried to do at the very beginning of the match. Ooh, Alabama slam, whiplashing. Uh-oh. I've seen Project Titan do this before. She's looking. She's going to hit it. Up. And no, an escape. A good escape by the champion. Ooh, discus elbow strike. Amy Wade's fighting off disaster there. Four minutes into the match now. 30 minute time limit on the clock to prevent, or at least greatly minimize the possibility of a time limit draw, in which case the title would remain with the champion. Miss with the kick, that may have been that... Oh, there we go, Superwoman punch, swing and a miss. And, oh, side Russian leg sweep, great float over into the strikes. Could have possibly floated straight into the cover there, but wanted to get a little extra oomph on it, too. And that may have been a strategic error. Should have probably gone straight for the cover after that Russian leg sweep. There's the Superwoman punch. And the... And that very Canadian knee strike for the one, two, three, Amy Wade. A few technical errors, a few unforced errors there, but Amy Wade with a clean and decisive finish in less than five minutes to retain the Canadian National Championship. And this was a striker's match. Here is your winner, and still, by the Maiden Wrestling League, Canadian National Champion, the undefeated Amy Wade. Amy Wade moves up to 9 and 0, oh, and the question becomes when will this undefeated streak end? Last week we learned that Thug Life Tanaka Kanichi was the new manager of the Devastation Corporation buying private contracts to bring them into the AWL. The following tag team contest is scheduled for one fall. Interesting turf making their rhythm the tag team combination. 
are the penultimate fighter, the technical wizard, Lee Masters, and the suplex master, Amine. Together they are the Ming Classic. Well, if you're looking for someone to welcome a not so welcome tag team into the AWL, I can think of none better than the new Classics, though they've had a pretty bad season in tag team wrestling. They're both their 0 and 2 as a tag team this season. The Devastation Corporation, a loss before they got their contracts, has been retroactively added to their total for this season. They are 0 and 1. And yep, Thug Life to Nakamichi confirming his association with DevCorp here. And their opponents being accompanied by Flex Rumble Crunch and their manager. The Life and Nakakinichi. Apparently. A combination of Max the Mashmaster and Barker McMastive. Together they are the Devastation Corporation. Well, none of these guys have been particularly impressive in individual in, well, in anything in the AWL so far. The only thing they're really good at is beating people up backstage, cheating, sneak attacks, and generally making a nuisance of themselves. Three classic wrestling throwbacks to the days of the body guy, to the days of the giant threat. You can see Blaster McMaster, and you can imagine Max Smashmaster going up against like 1985, 1986 Hulk Hogan. And Thug Life Tanaka Kimichi is also here. I, I, I don't know what else to say. He is desperate to get himself out of Botsu Mania to get him to keep his career on track. And this is an old trick of his. Hire the heavies, but he's never hired in this many people, and he's never hired heavies that were this, well, heavy. Problem is, I genuinely have no idea where he's getting the money to pay these people. That's the interesting part. Because right now, on, the, on his current contract, he ain't got the money. This match raged all over the AWL arena. And towards the end of it, things got really interesting as Blaster McMassive, also known as Mr. Thomas in MLW, multi-league competitor Mr. Thomas, Blaster McMassive, doing a lot of damage to the chest cavities of both. That's right, both, including the illegal fighter here. Legal combatants at this moment were Blaster McMassive and Sammy Nix, the suplex master down the outside, being attacked by Thug Life Tanaka Kenichi, the referee, doing what he can to maintain some kind of order here. The Blaster just damn near crippling these guys as Flex Rumble Crunch, who I admit has probably one of the best wrestler names of all time, gets involved. Last McMahon. These are the these are the actual legal combatants. Double Trapezius claw holes here. Remaining. This I noticed a pattern when I saw this match originally. The Devastation Corporation. I don't think they actually want to win wrestling matches. Blasphemy, though that is to say, they're just here to hurt people. They were passing up opportunities for pinfalls, opportunities to grab submission holds. They were passing up opportunities to return to the ring. They were passing... They were taking the dirty road when they didn't have to. This isn't about beating two AWL legends. Like the Technical Wizard and the Suplex Master. This is about hurting the Technical Wizard and the Suplex Master. And look at this. It's supposed to be a two-on-two -two match. Suplex Master Semi Nix having to fight his way through three guys to get at the person he's supposed to actually be fighting. One minute remaining. And given his 20 year career, Semi Nix has seen everything, he's done everything. And he's faced he's faced numbers odds. He's faced you know, the, the incalculable odds. These guys were here when the Bullet Club invaded the AW well years and years ago. And they were, I think they were actually part of the team that helped banish the Bullet Club from the Animated Wrestling League. 
Referees count up to 10 of 20. Blastwick Massive. Happy to just take the law, take the win by count out, I think. But look, he could have taken a win by count out there. He decided not to. Just so he could do that, so he could smash the suplex master into that metal crowd there. Okay, that's just a bike rack with a cloth cover over it. That is a deadly weapon, and of course this would go to a time limit draw. This match has been ruled a yeah, time they're really limit draw. They're really unhappy that nobody won. First of two matches tonight where the winner will determine the next challenger for the Tag Team Championship. And those matches will take place next week. It has been confirmed by the AWO Commissioner's Office next week, not one, but two tag team title matches on AWL Strong and Free, episode 34. As we try to give everyone in the best four an opportunity to fight for the belt before the end of the season and the... The following tag team contest is scheduled for one call. Introducing first, taking their way to the ring, accompanied by the Manipulator. The tag team combination of Neko Musume and Wild Thing. Together they are the number one rank in the AWL S4 Monster Union. Neko Musume, the cat daughter from the realm of the Yokai, 25 and 29 in her AWL career ratio of minus 4. Wild Thing. From Transylvania, the Hardcore Furry, 21 and 29, ratio of minus 8. The Neka Musume with a slightly better win-loss record over her career. But these two are one of my favorite kinds of tag teams. They are the diametrically opposed tag team, the, the Ferrari and the Tank. Wild Thing is the Tank, Neka Musume with her incredible agility, body agency, and just tenacity. Viva, Monster Union, he's the Ferrari in this tag. Now on paper, this should be an easy night for the Monsters, but we know better than that. And their opponents, they are the number two rank in the AWL S4, the tag team combination of Joya and Tormenta de Fuego, the ladies of Lucha. Less than brilliant win-loss records for both of these women, let's be frank. But as a tag team, they have been much more successful than they are as individuals. So we'll see if the ladies of Lucha can pull it together and get themselves into title contention right here, right now. 15 minutes on the clock. Bang a gong. Match is on. Hollow and elbow tie up to start us off. Tachi eyes a dragon screw leg whip by the cat daughter Neko Musume against the jewel of Lucha Libre, Joya. Whip into the neutral corner. Joya looking for. What the heck is Joya looking for? It looks like maybe like a triangle drop kick. Takes her opponent down. And she's going to wait. This is psychological. Oh, wait a minute. No, she's going after. She wants to go after her opponent, but the referee's stopping it. And a couple of, I would say... Oh, wait a minute. Moonsault. Orihara Moonsault out of no... Inverted Orihara, I guess. Lion Salt out of nowhere. The tag is made to, I think, actually the tallest wrestler in the match. And that is the Firestorm. Ormenta del Fuego. 8 and 25, ratio of minus 17 in her career. She needs someone to, quite frankly, light a fire under her ass. But working her way up the tag division with, uh, as part of the Ladies of Lucha, that could very well do it. The winners of this match will face Solo Darling, Willow Nightingale, The Burden to Be, next week. And I, th and I think either of them would pose a threat to the tag team champions, to the Joshi tag team champions. Ooh, face forward. Speaking of the Joshi division, we still have our main event tonight to come. That is Lady Smooth Jessica Kidd versus the non-binary Nightmare, the Warrior of the Wasteland, Max the Impaler. In a Joshi championship match, Max winning the contractual obligation rumble. 
to earn that place in the best four. I mean, we all know the cats always land on their feet. We have now learned the luchadors do not necessarily. Boom! Full extension of the leg on those kicks. As Nekomusume climbing up, and she doesn't need a fire engine to get her out of that tree. Big splash! That rolls right back up to her paws. Nekomusume, a lot of tools in her toolbox. Cat scratch fever, an excellent variation of the ministerial suplex there. The catatonic, perfect landing. And now double tag, and here come the tanks of the teams. Wild Thing, the mistress of the Lycanthra Bomb, and Tormenta del Fuego, Fireball Punch, and of course the Burning Hammer in her wheelhouse, or at least her variation of the Burning Hammer. And there it is, the Fireball Punch! And she, I've seen her win matches with that. One, two, very quick kick out. We're three minutes into the contest at this point. Tormenta del Fuego looking to do something potentially very dangerous. Fire will fall from the heavens. Tormenta del Fuego, no! She gets caught and dropped with a powerball. Good grief. As the two Ferraris fight on the outside, our cameras are going to focus on the legal action. Remember, pinfalls and submissions can only take place in the ring. Body slam and a charging headbutt by... I almost said the champion by a wild thing may have been I may have been jumping the gun there. Wild thing on Wild Thing and Willow Nightingale. Damn, I want to see that match. Two count, says the referee, and the crowd, by the way. Thank you for that. Cliche though it is. The paws of fury flying as Wild Thing looking to do as much damage as she can to her opponent. Wearing her down, making her easy to pin her. I would say, or submit, but let's face it, Wild Thing is not the type to go for a submission ever. <laughs> and she will set up for that Lycanthra Bomb or some other power move. Just like this one into the... Ooh! Into a one-arm, basically a one-arm power slam. As the hair is flying, the fur is flying, inverted DDT by Tormenta del Fuego, the luchadora, deep in enemy territory right now. She needs to regain control of the ring. And this is a good way to do it. Can she walk her opponent back? No. Leaves Wild Thing in the corner, allows the tag to happen, and now we got the mismatch. The tank versus the Ferrari. German suplex. There are cats in Germany, lots of cats in Germany. So that makes sense. A diving tag, and we're back to the high flyers. Or the higher flyers of the team. In the case of the ladies of Lucha. Five minutes have elapsed. Ten remain. Of course, the wrestlers can hear those um, calls over the PA system, so they know how much time they've got left. And going down into the cross arm. You call it, call it cross arm breaker. Call it a Juji Katame. I prefer Juji Katame because I lived in Japan for a decade and a half. But whatever. It's a painful hold, but Nekomusume able to get her front paw out of trouble. Oof. Butterfly suplex by the cat daughter of Monster Union. There it is, Cat Scratch Fever! Those claws being brought to bear. One, and there's a kick out. Irish whip over the top rope, down to the floor. The illegal woman removed from the ring. And now it looks like Wild Thing being brought in to finish things. With nine minutes on the clock. Arm drag to escape by Joya. Unable to knock her opponent down, but does have her quite literally on the ropes. Joya looking for... Well, I don't know what she's looking for. Looking for something. Ooh, just going for the head, going for the legs, going for an arm, going for some sort of a limb. Try to, try to find a piece you can take. Oh, Jesus! Oh, that German very, very close to that turnbuckle with a solid steel ring underneath. And Diamond Flosion reversal into a DDT. She went all the way around the world on that. 360 degree spin. And that's a setup. He sought so was a like 
got the rope just draped over the top rope. That's all you need. Cross the plane of the ropes. But the damage is done. Neko Musume, all she has to do is pick up the pieces. And it's Tuna and Queen tonight. Isatsuaza, Catatonic! The Catatonic after the Lycanthra Bomb. This is over. One, two. A desperate save by Tormenta de Fuego. Look, Joya still twitching. She has not gotten up until then. That would have absolutely been a three count off of the Catatonic, off of the Lycanthra Bomb. I don't know how Joya is standing right now. Kick to the midsec. Do a DDT. Double danger tandem. Damien's dinner time, whatever you want to call it. Seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Plenty of time here, especially since Joya. Yeah, Joya, this is smart. Joya has got to make a tag and a tag poke. He would not go amiss. But Nekomusume not allowing it. Trying to control the ring, trying to control the territory. Hammerlock, Spinebuster. I don't know if she has a name for that, but it's impressive. You can abs you'd absolutely break your arm on that. But whatever she calls it, I call it good enough for a win. If Goya had made that final tag, this would have been a different story. There's the Cat Scratch Fever, the Lycanthra Bomb, and the Catatonic. That was it. Here are your winners. Monster Union! And there you see it. it's going to be official Bird and the Bee versus Monster Union for Joshi Tag Team titles next week, seven days from now. And she, you know she's going to say it. Say it together with us. Viva Monster Union. The rules for the men are the same as the women. It's number one contenders match. The Augments versus Solar Wings, and Solar Wings have been waiting all season for their opportunity since participating in the Forge of Four tournament. The following Tag Team Contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, making their way to the ring. From the laboratory, accompanied by their creator, Dr. Jigoku. They are the number one rank in the AWL Best Four. Project Petsu 3.0 and Jigoku Destroyer. Together they are the Augment. Honestly. I, this could lead to one of those matches where I just don't want anybody to win. The Augments versus Gomba's Shadows for the AWL World's Tag Team Titles. Uh-uh. I don't want to see that. Solar Wings, the Power of the Sun versus the Forces of Darkness. That's a match I want to watch. But these are, let's face it, some of the best wrestlers in the world. 84 and 56, Project Tetsu, Chikoku Destroy, 124 and 8 and 68. 124 wins in the AWL, more than anyone. Just think about that, 124 wins, and we do like 20 episodes a year. Or 20 episodes a season. And their opponents making their ring-ring tag team combination of the Eruption Star and The Rock. They are the number two rank in the AWL Best Four. Solar Wing. Raiga no Deshi, Eruption Solar, the Solar Flare of Lucha Libre, and THE ROC from the Tales of Sinbad. The Rock. These two have been dealing with injury issues. They've been dealing with some personal issues. But they've had this spot in the AWL Best Four in their back pockets all season long. And, and now it could be time for them to cash in. But they have one more massive obstacle before they, have, before they get to face the Tag Team Champions. 15 minutes on the clock. 
Oh, good dive roll to escape. Collar and elbow tie up. First actual contact. First. Oh, my, oh! A falling gut buster. And notice the metallic shoulders. But those cybernetic implants of Jigoku destroyed go all the way up his arms. So that was essentially a big ball of metal right to the rib cage of Eruption. So long, he still comes back with a Lucha Libre style DDT. It's power versus high flying in this opening segment of this tag team number one contenders match. The men's and women's tag team titles on the line next week, and we still have the Joshi Championship, the singles championship, on the line, N-E-X-T. Semi-final match all the way around, code red and yellow. But a lucky break for Jigoku Destroy, and in comes the powerhouse of Solar Wings, the wings of Solar Wings. The Rock, and these two met in the Canadian National Championship final. And then again, when The Rock defeated Jigoku Destroy to become the second Canadian National Champion, a title he would eventually unsuccessfully cash in on Project Tetsu, I believe it was. So, no love lost between these two, no love lost between these teams. Uh, taking a look at the win-loss records in the tag team division, the Augments undefeated this season. They're 2-0 and oh in a season where the tag teams just haven't gotten a lot of TV time. Solar Wings 1-2. and two. So, on paper, it's the Augments' match to lose. And with a power slam like that, you can see why I would think that. Two minutes in now as Eruption Solar fighting back from underneath, code red and yellow. And so a lot of people will use that, that code red or that code whatever as a high impact move. They don't try to use it as a pit. Maybe because you don't have the best possible leverage there, but Eruption Solar, he's not wasting movement. He when he's which is what a lot of people accuse these these luchadors of doing. But he's going for the covers, he's going for the pins whenever he thinks he got the opportunity. And Solar now trying to even up the odds oh, and Zagiri. And oh, it's, it's Tope Suicide aims at Jigoku, at Dr. Jigoku, and misses. If he had taken out all three men in a few seconds, that would have been impressive. That would have been daring. Instead, it was just foolish. The Tope Suicida, I don't say ban it, I don't have a problem with Tope Suicida. The problem with it is that with a move like that, you need to have something to push off to off of. When you land on, when you hit somebody with a Tope Suicida, you're essentially pushing off of them with all of your weight and all of your momentum that you've built up, and that push-off is what allows you to land either on your feet or at least break your own fall. So a Tope Suicida, where you miss and go right into the ground or right into the crowd barricade, that is an injury waiting to happen. And the bad doctor now getting a splash for his trouble. I, I would say this was a bad idea, but you know what? Jigoku deserves it. He has deserved it for a very long time. The diabolical Dr. Jigoku, who has actually wrestled one match in the AWL, filling out the rosters of an eight man Atomicos match, but. and actually winning it, being on the winning side of that. Now you can advance to our Tag Team Championship next week by disqualification, by countout, by anything. Pinfall submission and knockout, of course. The only way you don't get into the title match is by time limit draw. If we do not have a winner, if we do have a 15 minute time limit draw, then there will be no Tag Team title match next week. We don't do triple threat nonsense here in the AWL. You want to win a title, it's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, or it's going to be two-on-two, uh, -two, minus the most egregious of circumstances, like the clear-the-board match that we had at the end of last season for the Joshi Championship. Jigoku Destroy still talking a lot of trash. His mouth-writing checks, his backside cannot cash. But Eruption so large, he thinks, thinks better of the Topa Suicida this time. Trying to hit an Irish cannot 
Use an Irish whip on somebody that big. Oh, big overhand chop. You learned that part. Five minutes of the last. Ten remain. One of the last students of Jushin Thunder Liger doing like Ring Liger's active career. Nine minutes, 50 seconds, a third of the way through the time limit, and the tag has made the Rock legal again. And we're back to Rock and Jigoku Destroy. That is a match I think we're going to be revisiting many, many times over the years. Dragon Screw Leg Whip by the Jap by the Destroyer from Hell. This Project Tetsu comes in. Going up. These two have met before as well in singles action. Vertical suplex! Rock! Standard vertical suplex doing damage to the rock. If he's going to be looking for Hita Beach on a moon, Saruto. He's going to be looking for the spell check. And I think Project Tetsu has glitched. Um, do we need to turn him off and turn him back on again? No, no, he's, he's okay. Yeah, you might want to do a software update to go through, just, just letting you know. Trying to get the opponent into his own corner. The Rock needs to escape, he needs to get out of here, but the Lariat does not work. A clothesline ineffective against the Super Heavyweight, the Iron Project, the oldest of the, uh, the Active Augments, the Dean of the Active Augments, down in the neutral corner, Snake Eyes. And now a blatant goozle, a blatant chokehold. The referee's saying, stop it. He can disqualify for that. If the hold is held too long or the referee's instruction is ignored for too long, the referee can and will disqualify. I know the uh, Solo Wings don't want to get into a tag team title match by disqualification. But wait a minute, sneaky little roll up, small package. One, referee checking to make sure the shoulders were down. The Rock immediately started rocking and rolling. Rocking and rolling, R-O-C-I-N-G and rolling to make sure the shoulders didn't get fully pinned there until he could kick out. Oh, and another sneaky shot this time by The Rock to Project Tetsu. If he had used those kind of strategies in his championship match, he might be an AWL Grand Champion. It might be the AWL Grand Champion today. We don't know. We don't get to live in the world of should or the world of could have been. Huge power bomb all the way down to the floor and the rock's back might be broken in half. Erupsi and Solar are leading Project Tetsu away from his partner. Giving the rock the time he needs. Oof, and another power slam. This time to Erupsi and Solar gives him the opportunity and I think, yeah. Erupsi and Solar has been busted open. This is a tactic. This is a not good tactic, but it is a tactic to get this done. Get the let the. I mean, look at it. The rocks back up. He's back in the ring, and right now the count is not on the side of Project Tetsu. But I don't think Erupsi and Solar was going to keep the robot out there. Keep the Iron Project out. Oh, good block. What I'm sure was a Tetsu driver into that float over DDT. Can Erupsi and Solar finish this? He is possessed of unexpected strength first when he does this supernova the satsuaza the ultimate technique the finishing maneuver the supernova no this is indeed tag team wrestling he's looking for the move bequeathed to him by jushin thunder liger he's looking for the romero special and he's got it can he hold it can he hold it can he keep it locked in no he cannot if not for Jigoku Destroy, that would have been over. Jigoku Destroy stops himself from going over the top. But he still needs to get out of here before the referee makes the final five count. Swing and miss with a drop kick. Uh-oh, Isatsu was a Tetsu Driver! Into the cover, kind of close to the ropes, but far enough away. One, two... No! I don't... I, okay, I don't know if that was a kick-out or an accidental breakup, but all four men... Oof! Metal fist right to the temple. He's already been busted open. I think he is bleeding under that mask. Leg drops. Wing and a miss. No water in the proverbial pool for the Iron Project. Super! 
Nova for the second time in the contest. One, two, no, and again broken up. Ten minutes have elapsed. Five remain. That's the second time Eruption Solar has been a second away from winning this match, but Digoku Destroy has come in and ruined it, and now Eruption Solar being a bit of a hothead here. We should be focusing on the man that's actually legal. Your legal combatants are Eruption Solar and Project Tetsu. Digoku Destroy running interference as Eruption Solar did earlier on the outside, I believe. Four and a half minutes remaining. Sidewalk slam off of the distraction. Game over. And the Rock could not get there in time. Here are your winners. The old man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is official next week. It's going to be Evil versus Evil. Mad Science versus Dark Magic. Gamba Shadows augments the tag team titles. All for Dr. Jigoku. We're going to finish tonight with a Joshi Championship match. Power versus Skill. Let's go to the ring. The following contest is your main event of the evening. It is scheduled for one fall, one submission, or a knockout to decide the winner. And it is for the Anime Wrestling League, Joshi Championship. And this match will be contested under AWL rules. Now please welcome the participants. I'll explain why the announcer had to explain that this is an AWL Rules match momentarily as we welcome the non-binary nightmare, our challenger, Max the Impaler. They are undefeated in the Animated Wrestling League. 3-0, and oh, and they are also the winner of this year's Contractual Obligation Rumble, still available in the playlist below. And yes, as you can see there from the Chiron, they are one half of the Tokyo Joshi Pro Princess Tag Team Champions. See the Princess Tag Belt around their waist. And yeah, because when I think of, of a princess, I think of Max the Impaler. Just simpatico. These are just two things that go together in your brain. <laughs> Arising from the noxious fumes of the wasteland. They've been active in Japan. They're active in the United States as part of NWA Power, where they have been under the tutelage of the sinister minister James Mitchell. And if you think he can get into, if you think, if he, if you think he can get into Canada or Japan, you got another thing coming. Max is ready to smash. The anticipation building like the end of that song. The end of that eerie entrance music. And remember a moment ago where we had to clarify this will be contested under AWL rules? Well, that's because of this woman. Lady Smooth Jessica Kidd who successfully cashed in the Intercontinental Championship over on AWL Hontai make her way to this position, being able to travel around the world defending that floating championship. She is contracted to AWL Hontai, getting to defend her title here in Canada. All of her title defenses of the IC belt and her cash-in were conducted under World of Sport rules. This is the first time we've seen Jessica Kidd in an AWL rules singles match in months, I think actually all season. And as a result, we, she's untested as far as I'm concerned. Great deal of experience here in the AWL. 23 and 19, her career record in singles and tag combined. And of course, her partner not here because not contractually allowed to travel between brands unless you got one of the four floating championships, including that, the Red Leather of the Joshi Division. Introducing first the challenger, fighting out of the Woodstack. Max the Impaler! And her opponent, she's 
the reigning and defending MVP. They're the only you idiot. Champion, coming out of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland tonight, making her first title defense. Lady Smooth, Jessica Kidd. This is an officially sanctioned Gershi Championship match under the auspices of the Animated Wrestling League, AWL Commissioner presiding. At the sound of the bell, AWL official Marcus Bobbanoush in charge. This is going to be technical expertise versus steamroller. Max the Impaler in only their fourth AWL match in less than 30 minutes could be the champion of the Joshi division. Going up, going down, Snake Eyes to start us off, and that's the power game that Max the Impaler brings that very few other women do, not to mention just the I don't care attitude. We've seen giantesses in this. Hey, wait a minute, quick cover here. First cover of the matchup. Referee slightly out of position. That could have been the fastest, I'll even I'll say it, upset in history. And now quickly going for a hold. The pin doesn't work. Lady Smooth immediately, very smoothly, I will say, grabs on a potential submission hold, although she can't maintain it. And snapping with that Alabama slam. And Max the Impaler, they're not wasting any effort either. Not going for a pin on that slam, but going straight for the legs. Oof! And going for the inner leg muscles. Trying to sprain a muscle there. Overstretch. European uppercut misses by a country mile, but still able to lock on a Manjigatame. Whether you call it the Manjigatame or the Octopus Hold, it's a move that is very, very difficult to endure for more than a few seconds. And oof, again, Max dropping her opponent across the top rope this time. And a big old splash! The weight advantage coming into play now. Ooh, good knee block! Lady Smooth running for some, some kind of running attack, which gets a knee to the face. And Max needs to be careful here. Uh-oh. Oh! Just can Oh look at that! She's got her she's got her tied up in ropes! Her arms have got Lady Smooth tied up in ropes. She goes for a, she goes for a sack of something. Credit credit to the old New Generation podcast. We are springboarding up to the top, looking for the big splash. Elbow drop from the top. From, a, from an AWL rookie, though an experienced professional wrestler. Max the Impaler making an impact literally on the, on the chest bone, on the sternum of Lady Smooth Jessica Kidd, who finally hits that European uppercut. And now, this, okay, I was wondering who was going to be the first to try to go to the outside. I expected it to be Max. And that time, unable to grab and stay on the apron. The different amount of elasticity between the close to the ring post and middle of the ropes may be a factor there. But I did not expect Lady Smooth Jessica Kidd to be the one to take us to the outside. Maybe she's thinking retained by countout? I don't know. Knee DT by the champion, and that is smart. Take away the height advantage, because everyone's the same height when they're flat on their back. 26, 45. Oh! And she is going for some kind of a ring out. Heard the count at six. Checking with the referee. Can we get a spotlight then? No, we can't. It was not for more than a second. Guys, um, this, this is a YouTube show. Uh, the, the audience, thank you. The audience seems to be able to see the program. I appreciate that. Maybe Jessica Kidd trying to make a point that she can brawl with the best of them. And DDT on those very, very thin, you can see how thin they are. Mats right on the concrete. And the non-binary nightmare writhing, she is in trouble. And Jessica Kidd may be taking a little too long to make that move, and Max makes her pay for it. Max the Impaler with that targeted knee. See the target right on the knee pad. One, two, 
no, we very, very nearly had a new Joshi champion. It wasn't even a Joshi. <laughs> and I love that. We are not worthy, indeed we are not, of this level of professional wrestling action. Another targeted knee strike for the one, two, no, ju and just by a millimeter. Barely, 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 barely got that shoulder up and didn't get it up very far. This is wrestling, the powerhouse versus the technician. And the people are cheering the powerhouse, the people are cheering the non-binary nightmare wrestling for the 21st century. That's the AWL promise. Nine minutes of that, 25 remain. White knees of Dover, Isatsuwaza into the cover. One, two. Thankfully, the non-binary nightmare, the warrior of the wasteland, able to survive the white knees of Dover. But back into the Manjigata, mate, no! All that force into the backcracker and then being bent over as your neck and your arms are getting wrenched, as your leg is locked up. That is a symphony of pain. The Joshi Championship main eventing tonight. The Canadian National Championship opening the show. Bookending with great women's wrestling here in the AWL season 20 where we are focused on the Joshi division 24 minutes remaining but no the referee sees the rope Jessica Kidd didn't that's a rare technical error by Jessica Kidd catch of the leg and oh look at that into the power ball an unusual counter to a caught kick but a very effective one is Jessica Kidd reeling now Open to a flurry of offense by the challenger. The referee ha might have, have to call this a TKO. Lady Smooth is going to have to show some level of defense, and there it is. A desperation maneuver, but she's back on her feet, going for the white knees of Dover yet again. Boom! He goes for the cover, pulls the leg away from the ropes. One, two, three! White knees of Dover do it again. For the second generation... British wrestler Jessica Kidd able to survive the storm that is Max the Impaler. Let's take a look at that again. That's the White Knees of Dover and the Manji Gatame. Everything brought to bear to retain the Joshi Championship. Here is your winner and still on the Minute Wrestling League, Joshi Champion, Ladies Move to Jessica Kidd. Thanks for watching. Kore de Marida.